Hi, welcome back to Kirsty's virtual classroom. Last week, we started talking about the Earth's resources. This week, we're going to move into non-renewable and renewable resources, how each are made, and kind of what the differences are. So first, let's talk about non-renewable resources. So a non-renewable resource is a natural resource, but we can't remake it, we can't regrow it. Um, <clears throat> at any scale that is comparable to what we actually consume. So we consume far more non-renewable resources than they can be actually replenished. For example, coal and oil and gas will learn take millions of years to actually develop. So the ability for that to replenish at the rate at which we use it is insane to think about. So non-renewable resources, once they're used, they're gone. Okay. So nuclear energy is one. So nuclear fission uses uranium to create energy. So uranium is mined and then used as a resource in order to provide nuclear energy. Now, unfortunately, uranium, there's only so much of it, right? So that is considered a non-renewable resource because at some point in time, all of the uranium that's mineable will be gone. Looking at coal, petroleum, and gas, these are probably the most familiar um, non-renewable resources to you. These are all considered non-renewable because they can't be replenished in a short amount of time. So we call these fossil fuels. So when you hear the term fossil fuels, we're talking about anything that's coal, petroleum, or natural gas related. So how is coal made? Well, coal is made a little bit different than natural gas. Coal is made typically from land creatures dying in swamps, and then all of that gets buried over time and compressed. And all of that dead plant organic matter is compressed into the soil from heat and pressure as it's buried over time, and it takes millions of years for this to happen, and it compresses into coal, which can then be mined and used as a fossil fuel. So here we need a bunch of plant material to die in on land and then be buried over millions of years and a lot of heat and pressure to turn the dead plants into actual coal. So this takes a very, very long time. Okay, but this is different than oil and gas. So oil and gas happens in a marine environment when a bunch of the ocean life or sea life will die and then be buried. So unlike the land plants, here we're actually looking at things um, like plankton and phytoplankton that consist of hydrocarbons that can then be buried over time after they die and that can get compressed into oil and gas reserves, which can then be extracted and used as fossil fuels. So a lot of these will be found in things like sandstone, limestone, and shale. These are uh, sedimentary rocks <clears throat> that are typically formed um, in and around marine environments. Okay, but what is the difference between uh, coal and oil and gas? Well, like I've already said, coal is formed from the land-based plants in things like bogs and coastal swamps whereas oil and gas come from the tiny marine organisms that are underneath the ocean. So this would be like algae, phytoplankton, anything that you might find in the ocean. All right, so renewable resources are a little bit different. <clears throat> in the last 20, 30 years, renewable resources have been a heavy hitter in um, the energy kind of realm. Uh, it was a lot more expensive and things are getting cheaper, luckily, especially for um, homeowners if you want to put solar on your home or something like that. Um, things are getting cheaper, but we still, you know, we're not 100% there. Coal and gas and, um, yeah, coal, natural gas and petroleum all still are much, much cheaper than like installing a solar panel. But if you look at the longevity of the solar panel and how long it can last you, and how much energy it can produce versus a fossil fuel, it is worth the investment. Um, and it does provide a renewable resource because as long as we don't have some sort of eternal winter occur, um, solar panels will always absorb energy from the sun, which is a great resource. 
Um, we also have geothermal, wind, biomass, and water. So like hydroelectric dams um, will also produce a lot of energy. So a renewable resource are natural resources that can be replenished in a short amount of time. Okay, so solar, you're probably more familiar with this because a lot of people have solar panels on their home now. So this is just energy from the sun. So why is the energy from the sun renewable? Well, if the, the energy from the sun wasn't renewable, photosynthesis wouldn't occur every day, right? So as soon as the sun is blocked for an extended period of time, it stops producing the energy or hitting the, the rays from the sun won't hit the earth in such manner that we can absorb the energy and use it for things like photosynthesis. So <clears throat> as long as the sun exists and the sun's rays are hitting the earth, we will always be able to regenerate that energy. We have geothermal, which is energy from the earth's heat. So this is using any heat that we can extract from the earth, which a lot of times happens from magma plumes because magma plumes are very hot, that can generate, we can use it to generate energy. And so this is renewable because the earth is constantly producing heat. Um, we have a lot of active volcanoes. And yeah, this is a picture of um, Old Faithful in Yellowstone, which goes off every 20, 30 minutes or so. And it's basically boiling water that gets shot out of this hole in the ground and it that water is being heated from the magma chamber below and that magma chamber is very extensive it extends five plus miles into the earth so imagine the amount of actual energy you could get from that heat from that magma plume so this is a renewable energy because we can constantly get um, energy out of a magma plume that's constantly regenerating itself. All right, wind is another one. You see these all over uh, like Alameda Pass, Chaco Pass, they have a lot of these up now. Um, they are wind propellers and they absorb any wind energy that you know comes through these different passes. Um, and there's a lot of wind in these passes because they're usually narrow zones where air can flow. And so these are um, renewable because we can constantly absorb energy from wind. Uh, wind is not necessarily gonna run out because it has to do with air pressure. So as long as air pressure continues to fluctuate in the atmosphere, we will be able to absorb um, and use the energy from wind. Uh, biomass is um, any energy from burning organic or living matter. Um, so this is renewable because there will always be new trees that can be burned. Um, there will always be new biomass that can be burned or living matter that can be burned and then we can absorb the energy from that. Water or hydroelectric. hydroelectric. This is energy from the flow of water. Um, so this, you've probably seen these extensive dams. This is the Hoover Dam. Um, in Arizona, Arizona, Nevada. And um, this dam uses energy from water flowing through pipes past the dam, and they use that energy to power a lot of different things in the area. Um, so this is renewable because water will always flow on the surface of the earth. So as long as we have the technology to create energy from the flow of water, we will be able to use this renewable resource as long as we have water on the planet, which should be there for a while. Okay, so to summarize, what are the difference between non-renewable and renewable resources? The big difference is the replenishment. So if the resource cannot be replenished in a short amount of time, we would consider it a non-renewable resource. If it can be replenished or uh, re repeated um, in a short amount of time, we call that a renewable resource. Okay, so that's the end of this PowerPoint, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.